David Goldman, I want to get your take on uh, what you observed at the APAC conference uh, earlier this week, which I thought was kind of pathetic, actually, if you want my opinion, uh, what I saw of it. How about you? Uh, Hillary Clinton came up and took ownership of the miserable Iran deal, which is the worst thing that's happened to Israel possibly since the United States forced uh, Israel out of Suez in 1956. It's the only serious existential threat to the existence of the state of Israel. Hillary Clinton bragged about her role in bringing it about and received considerable applause from liberal Jews uh, attending this. Donald Trump, in contrast, said he would dismantle the Iran deal, which is good for Israel, and take Israel's side on all the critical issues that hold the Palestinian Authority to account for inciting terrorism, uh, and indicated that he thought uh, the President of the United States had done a horrible job with respect to Israel, and APAC apologized for Trump's attack uh, on President Obama. Uh, really, we find ways, we Jews, uh, to, just, to undermine ourselves probably more effectively than anyone else. Uh, it, it's sometimes a disadvantage to be smart. David, here, here's a question I want to push further with this. Who are the Jews at APAC? Are they Jews who practice religious Judaism, or are they people who don't and want to feel good about themselves so they go to an APAC conference for a few days? The latter is my impression. Obviously, you can't make a sweeping generalization over that many people, but I was watching it with some other observant Jews, and, you know, the whole kiss cam thing at the arena and all the spectacles, and we were, like, laughing at it before we went to Mincha Mari. We are like, this is pathetic. Uh, most of the people on the day seem to have lost their kippot. Yeah. So, yes. The, Which was particularly and, bad because they had bald heads uh, in those cases. Now, it's hard to generalize. APAC is here comes everybody, as James Joyce said about the Catholic Church. Uh, the largest single donation from any synagogue was from my home shul in Manhattan, Gekhilat Yashur, of which, of course, we're very proud. Uh, but the vast majority of American Jews are, are secular and liberal and ashamed of being Jewish. And you know, they should listen very carefully to the Megillat Esther this evening, where Mordecai and Esther and the Jews have a very rough indeed and deal with some nasty people in order to survive in ancient Shushan 2,500 years ago. Interesting. Um, would you say that APAC has sort of lost its effectiveness? I mean, can any politician, I, I want to get back to Purim with you in a bit, but can any politician really take it seriously? Like when they have a group of like 40 people from suburban Atlanta, all on a very strict regiment, uh, you know, coming in and they know the routine by now. Do any politicians really take it seriously or is, does APAC totally exist? for the purpose of, Apex, purpose of Apex existence right now? I think it's extremely important for the state of Israel to have a consensus policy that's supportive of the state of Israel. Right. Even though uh, a great deal of what the APAC leadership did uh, disappointed me, to put it mildly, there are, uh, APAC establishes certain red lines which American politicians dare not cross. For example, no American politician is going to run for office and propose to stuff a Palestinian state down the throats of the Israelis. Right. That's something the Russian government has voted to do, something the Swedish government has already proposed to do, and the French are considering. Mm -hmm. An enormous danger to the state of Israel is that the United Nations Security Council, without an American veto, will declare Whoops, there's a Palestinian state. Whoops, it, uh, the borders in Israel are the 1967 uh, armistice line, and the Palestinian state is under no obligation to um, acknowledge the existence of the state of Israel to make peace or do anything else. And then Israel has two Gazas mm -hmm. on its border. That's something which the Europeans very well may push. Uh, and the United States veto is a guarantee against that. So even though uh, the Iran deal is miserable and 
it's shameful that Hillary Clinton got applause after taking ownership for that deal. Nonetheless, APAC does establish certain boundaries for American politics, which are beneficial to the state. They're not as beneficial as they should be, but it still serves a purpose, so it's good uh, to support it, and it's, that's why pro-Zionist Orthodox Jews should be involved, despite the fact that they have to circulate among people who they probably wouldn't socialize with at any other occasion. Well put. Um, speaking of Europe, which you mentioned, uh, I mean, do you see some sort of, I mean, you can't help it, but do you see some irony that APAC was apologizing yesterday for Trump's behavior, like just a couple hours after, uh, or really Trump's comments, just a few hours after this terrible Muslim bombing attack in uh, Brussels? Well, the, Donald Trump is not a candidate to my liking. I support Ted Cruz. I think Cruz has the personal character and intelligence and understanding of policy to be a really excellent president. Trump worries me uh, on many different levels. But the fact is, Europe cannot protect itself, no matter what it does, after admitting uh, more than a million migrants whose origin they can't possibly track. They don't know how many are false passports. Even the ones who have real passports, they have no way of verifying their connection to terrorist organizations. And it's estimated that ISIS has already infiltrated fa several thousand operatives into Europe along with the migrant stream. There's no possible way to know. Trump electrified the United by saying, until we know what's going on, let's not have any Muslims come into the United States. That's not what I would have proposed, but he moved the goalposts on the debate in terms of American security in a way that a majority of Americans support, according to all of the polls. Now, Trump should get at least a certain amount of respect for taking an outrageous position, which shifts the character of the debate. Right. And were you going to address APAC, which uh, invited him, let him speak, and then acted like, in my opinion, complete ingrates yesterday. Well, APAC decided that they were going to uh, do ritual obeisance to uh, President Obama because they've got a big liberal constituency. Uh, Trump was characteristically rough in his comments about Obama. Uh, if this were a recorded line, I would say uh, a lot worse than it was. That right. Trump said about Obama. Uh, but the problem is, APAC's liberal constituency, uh, which doesn't want to break with the president, is the most hostile president to Israel since its founding. And that's, uh, that's simply outrageous. It's not so much the APAC leadership. They know their customers, and the majority of their customers are liberal Jews. Yeah, and that goes back to what I was originally saying. You know, it, it, I was with Orthodox Jews. We watched a few minutes before going to uh, synagogue for Mincha Mariv, and meanwhile, these liberal Jews got to feel good about themselves, all the Judaism that they don't practice, because they go to APAC for a few days and have some nice meals, uh, probably at non-kosher restaurants the same way. But let me just close with one thing on Judaism. I'm just wondering if you can, with Purim starting tonight, we're both fasting right now for the fast of Esther, uh, if you can just relate things that are going on with the presidential race, the attack in Brussels, and um, the APAC conference, and whatever else, uh, a little bit more than you did before to the holiday of Purim. Well, in Purim, the Jewish people had to deal with a very dodgy character, namely Ahash Varosh, who was a terror mark. Pity, mean, uh, the kind of mind uh, that a mind like a pillow. It took the impression of the last person who sat on it. Mm -hmm. And Haman persuaded the Harkarosh to destroy the Jewish people. Esther persuaded him not to. And the Jewish people are compelled to deal with a number of presidential candidates whom many of us don't like. I don't like Donald Trump. But Trump, like a Hosh is um, a dodgy character, but I think he can be brought, and we have seen today that with Trump. Uh, a strong stand in favor of the safety and continued existence of the Jewish people. So liberal Jews should put aside their squeamishness about some of Trump's comments and 
understand that whereas Hillary Clinton represents a danger to the state of Israel, Trump would be a strong supporter of the state of Israel. So if sadly it comes to a Trump-Clinton race, just as the Jews had to get a hot ferocious in their side and pour them, wasn't nice, but we had to do it, uh, we should stand behind Trump against Clinton. Okay, uh, David Goldman, thank you, and have a great uh, tour. Thank you, Hudson. I see you too, Adam.